I like to call this May 7th Council Work Session to order. Neither chief is here yet. Since neither chief. chief. Chief Slack is away on vacation, as I understand. Uh, uh, Murrow will be here to comment on the uh, one item uh, uh, dealing with the proposed Sky Lantern Ordinance. Chief Slack is on vacation. So you want to go to Merle first, or? Uh, I would rather do Samantha, Samantha first. Or Samantha. So she's on the clock. Samantha, <laughs> <laughs> you're on. I promise to give it to two minutes this time. All so. right. <laughs> Hi, my name is Samantha Brinker with Gilmore and Associates. I'm here today to give you an update to the MS4 Pollutant Reduction Plan. As a reminder, MS4 stands for Municipal Separate Storm Sewer Systems. This means it's all your inlets, roads, swales, outfalls are all handled by your MS4. We've been handling the MS4 general permit since 2006 and Bristol Borough has been in compliance since then. If you recall, I gave a presentation in August of 2007 where I presented the Pollutant Reduction Plan. This is the borough's five-year plan between the years 2018 and 2023 to reduce sediment loadings from the MS4 stormwater discharges to Silver Lake and Mill Creek. In late January, the Department of Environmental Protection issued a technical deficiency letters for minor comments. We had a meeting with the DEP representative on March 1st, and we came up with a solution to meet the sediment reduction requirements. We had to propose a new BMP. There was two proposed. One was a hydrodynamic device, and one was a vegetated swale. They agreed with our calculations for the vegetated swale. Unfortunately, they did not like the hydrodynamic device. So therefore, we had to come up with a new solution, and. We determined that a rain garden at the Otter Street Fields would be in compliance and DEP gave an okay that we could go ahead with this proposal and that it would be acceptable. Um, we would put it in the corner, it would not affect, we would try not to affect the fields at all, the soccer field there. We could put it in the corner to get the drain cherry to work. Um, this presentation counts as the public meeting and the co you can comment on the public, the pollutant reduction plan from, it began on May 1st and it's going to be extending through May 31st. The public can review the pollutant reduction plan Monday through Friday between the hours of 8.30 and 4.30 at this office and comments may be, pro be provided in writing and addressed to Mr. Dillon. Um, that's all I have on the pollutant reduction plan. Does anyone have any questions on that? I do. Okay. Uh, I was listening to you. <laughs> what is the, I know we're being forced into this by the DEP. Correct. What is the cost of the borough on this? Where, where are we going to end up with this? Well, it's an unfunded mandate. Idea? I know it's mandated, yeah. but you know, all these mandates cost taxpayers money. Correct. So what do you think this is going to end up costing us? <laughs> Roughly. Well, I'm not going to hold here. Maybe Kurt wants it. She's got it. Oh. She's got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the construction could cost up to 100 to 150000 to construct both the vegetated swale and the rain gardens. Uh, we are looking for grants to fund the construction. Unfortunately, there is no funding for all the reporting that we do, and that's easily five to 10000 a year. So... You got all the engineering costs. Right. For the projects coming up. I, mean, I, I know it's expensive. I did a small one in Buckingham, a, a home that I built, I spent almost forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars just to put this garden in. Right. And DEP is requiring that you take such a large area, this will be a little bit larger of a rain garden than right. probably yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. I, but you know, it's like you, everybody puts these mandates on on you, whether it's a school district or whether it's the borough, and mm. you know we're end up, you know the taxpayers end up paying for this stuff. That's the only thing I don't think is right, and there's no way to fight these things. So. Yeah, I 
Do you have any questions? I mean, just what is a rain garden? I don't even know what that is. Uh, it's a question where the storm water would flow into, it would have amended soils where the groundwater would infiltrate into the ground and they have water tolerant plants that would help soak up and that way the sediment gets trapped in the rain garden. It will have to be maintained yearly um, and then this way when the storm water goes back into the ground, it's cleaned. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Chief, you ready or you want me to wait? I think you're... Come back to you. Yeah, if you would come back to me a second. I just want to All right, I'll open up public participation. participation then. So anybody on this side of the room would like to speak on any item, please go to the podium, state your name and address. That's nice. Anybody on this side of the room? Hi, everybody. Uh, my, that, raise my hand. <laughs> um, my name's Mimi Olson, and I own a couple properties in the borough, one on Mill Street and one on Green Street. Um, I'm here tonight, first of all, good evening to everybody, and thank you for allowing I have to read this, and if you notice me starting to pace a little bit, it's a problem. I have to keep my legs going or they'll lock up on me. Just so you know. Maybe if you turn that make microphone may not pick you up so okay if somebody can't hear me just say i can't no, hear we could hear you i'm talking about people at home oh okay um thank you for allowing me this opportunity to discuss some concerns that myself along with other borough residents and business owners have in reference to the proposed road widening of basin street starting at mill street my name is Mimi Olson. Um, I'd like to start off by letting you know of how much I love this borough. Since the age of 20, my dream was to one day own a house on the river in Bristol Borough. I lived many years off and on in the borough and had a business located in the borough for about seven years. My daughter and I own a business on Mill Street, are members of Raising the Bar, as well as we have become Elk members. Currently, I own two properties in the borough, a residential property on Green Street and a retail space in four apartments on Mill Street, located in the 300 block. My parents and I are in the process of purchasing two properties located at 106 and 108 Basin Street. The home I've dreamt about for 40 years was going to become a reality. With this being said, I can tell you how disappointed and alarmed myself and others were and still are. When we heard the borough might be widening Basin Street and taking away the beautiful park extension that runs along the rear of the townhouses and the road, only to be replaced with a sidewalk right up against our soon-to-be property and asphalt. I'm going to read now some of the rumors that I've heard over um, about this whole project. The first being this area is a bottleneck. Okay, if it creates a bottleneck at Mill and Basin, which is 20 foot wide currently from inside curb to inside curb, what is the widening going to do for the 23 foot wide curb to curb opening that sits 100 foot away? That part of the road can't be widened on one side due to power poles and the other side because it would cut into the park, which would require a lot of work. Also heard the council doesn't care for the builder and is widening this road. A suggestion to widen the road results in having a 36 inch wide sidewalk with curbs smacked right up against these new high taxpayers houses. For truck vendors, for their use during sponsored events, I'm not sure how many occur here we enjoy going to them ourselves. These trucks would sit three feet away from our townhome. They would create odors and noise, crowds and debris, disturbing and disrupting some of the borough's highest paying taxpayers' privacy. I doubt very few, if any, of these truck vendors are borough residents or would even come back to visit and spend some time in the borough. Their pa patronage is to themselves, not to the borough. Why not promote our restaurants or eateries 
located in the borough. Maybe some would create a special offering of foods that these truck vendors supply. Why not put those trucks up towards the 400 block? If people want truck food, they'll find it, and it would bring exposure to businesses located up at that end, the 400 and 300 block of Mill Street. Pokemon players. They draw cars into the borough, which leads players directly to the riverfront. These people park on both sides of the street that have painted yellow curbs. Isn't a yellow curb used to let drivers know this is not a stopping or parking lane? Why aren't we having police on patrol till these people parking illegally move on? Maybe ticketing would help. You can request from the people that sponsor these games to remove the borough's waterfront from the game. My fear is that this is something that the borough did as a marketing piece to bring more visitors into the borough. These are some of the questions. Tonight you'll be receiving a package with this list of questions and we, um, of what we'd like to discuss at the next council meeting. Who owns the parcel ground located at the corner of Mill and Basin Streets, running along Basin to the new townhomes? If owned by the state, what type of agreement does the borough have with the state for this property? What is the end goal? Why does this road need to be widened? Who thinks it should be widened? Who requested that PennDOT develop the proposed plan? Who pays for the road widening? The borough residents? What is the guesstimated cost of the road widening? Why not do things the right way? Run underground wiring? We can't because it's too expensive. This plan suggests a seven foot wide by 47 foot median to, to surround the existing power poles at one end of the street. Has PICO been requested to review the proposed plan? And from their perspective, is this something that would recommend or could be done as planned? The Pokemon people that's, that, stop, that stop, they create rubberneckers who are trying to figure out what the people in the park cars are doing, holding their cameras on the search of, for something in the park. Last week there was a yacht docked at the dock for some planned activity and a function at the King George. Both sides of Basin Street were lined up and down with cars that had no one in them. We didn't see one ticket. Why not? It indicates that no parking is allowed by the yellow curbing that runs up and down Basin Street. We have been watching the Library of Council meetings available on the website. One meeting in particular, I still have to find the date to go back to it. Mr. Joe Ventresca, the builder and owner of JVS, publicly spoke about some challenges he was experiencing. One of these challenges was the widening of Basin Street. <clears throat> Mr. Ventresca was told by Mr. DiGiuseppe that a meeting would be scheduled to review the road widening and the plans would be developed together as a team. How is it that this meeting has yet to be scheduled and a plan that the state prepared exists? Although it might be conceptual, it still exists. I was fortunate to happen upon a copy of the state provided plan, which will be used in our presentation to Borough Council. Tonight we are presenting a version of proposed options for Council to review and have the time to review prior to the meeting date yet to be determined. We will as well make copies of the Borough's plan along with the builder's suggestions available to borough residents and business people. I am positive that each and every borough resident and business owner were questioned about this proposed road winding, which would require the disappearance of an established park, would overwhelmingly choose the builder's plan. This plan will be cost-free to borough residents and business owners. The only cost which, which JVS will cover for might be for fees associated with having to hire an attorney to help us preserve some important history of the borough and make for a very impressive greeting to all the boaters and other visitors we look forward to having visit our docks. JVS has committed as well to landscaping this portion of the park with perennial shrubs and bushes. A portion of this park will be dedicated to seasonal flower plantings, which will include a watering system along with two park benches to people to sit 
and enjoy the tranquility and beautiful views. We need to create something that's going to make a good first impression and we'll encourage people to return and recommend others to visit us. Something that truly looks like the best Main Street in America. There is very little greenery in the park right now. Something we feel is the last thing that the borough needs to take away is existing greenery. When people come to visit by land or river to the brand new docks, their expectation is to enjoy the peace, tranquility, and relaxation a small riverside borough has to offer, where they can escape from the hot city filled with noise, traffic, cement, and asphalt. These new Basin Street townhomes are fir the first visual impression visitors arriving by boat will have of Bristol Borough. These homes are expensive, will generate tax money for the, the borough, and should be flaunted rather than looking like an inn with a highway in front of them. We are here tonight to let Council know we will be submitting a formal application to Council to have this concern added to the first available upcoming agenda for further discussion. In addition, we will be requesting a meeting with CARB for further discussion. The package each of you will receive tonight is our preliminary package with alternate plan suggestions that could accomplish the goal of controlling traffic. An article on some history of Bristol Borough taken right off of Google when searching for Bristol Borough. This is what visitors to Bristol Borough are expecting when they Google and get a beautiful article about Bristol Borough and learn more and it makes them want to come here, learn more, along with a list of questions we have along and you're also going to get another list of questions after the ones that we have already read, read because there's many more. Having ties with Bristol Borough for some time now, I've been told about the good, the bad, and the ugly, a lot of people in the borough. I learned a long time ago that things that you hear don't always have merit behind them. One needs to find out for themselves what are truths and untruths. Being an optimist, I believe in others doing the right for the situation in hand. I'm simply trying to follow protocol here, along with providing counsel with upfront information that might lead to some positive discussion versus an adversarial approach to a solvable solution. Let's live up to the reputation of being the best Main Street in the USA. Keep the history that still exists today aligned and continue to create new history for those who one day might be living in this wonderful borough, for those future generations who might assume some of our homes to live in down the road. At this time, I'd like to ask each council member separately what their thoughts are on having established a park minimized for the purpose of widening the road at the expense of eliminating the peaceful, peaceful serenity of a park. And I will start with our ward representatives. So I'd like to start with Vice President. Uh, no, Vice Chair, Mimi, you don't get an opportunity to ask them questions. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know where, I mean, if they want to answer the question, they can but you usually direct anything to me. But if you want to ask them, that's up to them if they want to respond or not. Okay. I don't think it's it's called, you know, it's something. Then I won't do it. I don't, I don't have a problem responding to it. Okay. So, I mean, to me, I, I don't have the right. Say it again. Mr. Peasant? No, Mr. Devine. I don't. I don't that's right. I got to get glasses, too. So I'm just Tony, trying. okay. Yeah. So, uh. To me, I, I don't have a problem. I like that Mr. Vantresca took the opportunity to buy that property. He was in bad shape. He put a lot of, you know, put a lot of money and time into it. I, you know, I don't know what the purpose is myself. So, I mean, I have no problem keeping it the way it is and and building, you know, a nice little park area with yeah, bushes and, and stuff. You're going to get a copy of our proposed plans that are taken from an overview, looking on to. Um, how much more do you have? Because um, then I want to, I want to, but I'll give you as much time as you need. I'm not in no hurry. Okay. I do want to. It's easier if you just continue instead of trying to get okay. into a dialogue with council. Okay. The only thing I want to say is that we do have an established email referred to as save the park bb at gmail.com. If anybody out there is interested in learning more about this project, getting a copy of the plans, Anything, please again email us at savetheparkbb at gmail.com. Thank you very much. No, no. Okay. All right, 
so, I mean, you went through so many things. I don't think that we're going to get into a question and answer every meeting, like you're saying, this is first set of questions, right. second. It really, he said he wasn't ready. I mean, we contacted the builder and we asked him to come in numerous times and right. we asked him to also come in this month and he said he wasn't ready to come in. Okay. So I'm just trying to clear the air about right. some things that you're being told that. And, that, you know, and I have no true. problem going back to and Joe. And you could check to and Joe asking him what the Joe that he said is. he wouldn't be ready for this month's meeting. Okay. We're willing, me personally, I'm not, you know, it's not me meeting with him. It's the borough engineers and whoever else is involved with this. Right. As far as council doesn't like I don't him. need answers to those questions tonight. Well, no, I just want you to made a okay. couple of statements that I want to clear up. Okay. I don't think any anyone sitting here has anything personally against Joe Ventresca. Okay. So whoever's telling you that, I'm telling you personally that you can go back to them and tell them I said they're a liar unless there's something here that one of these council members I don't know about. Okay. But I mean, you know, I don't I I appreciate everything he's doing for the town and but from what I'm hearing, it sounds like you want this borough to basically give up everything that we're doing down there. You know, Pokemon, vendors against it down there, uh, cops should be ticketing people on yellow lines. You know, the King George was, I mean, I don't know. We're not going to stop doing what we're doing just because, I mean, you or anybody else wants to buy a property there. Our job is to make sure that we make the right decision for the borough. Okay. And I think we've been over backwards with Mr. Ventresca to try to help him in any way we can to move this project along because there's nobody sitting here that does not want to see this project finished. Mm -hmm. Every time he comes here, he says, we're going to have a restaurant by the spring, we're going to have a restaurant by the fall, we're going to have a restaurant by the winter, we're going to have a restaurant by the spring. It's been going on for four or five years. And, I and that's none that, of our right. business. You know, there was numerous project managers that he fired and brought back and different builders. So I don't think you have the right story of what's going on. And it's not up to me or any member of council to sit here and, you know, say that Mr. Ventresca doesn't know what he's doing or he doesn't know what he's doing. I think that the engineers are here. And if, Kurt, I'm sure you want to, you could tell her how hard everybody's working to try to get this done. Now, right, well, okay, before somebody explains something to me, I do have another question. Who made the decision that that was the right thing to do? With what? With widening that. Agency? I think it's definitely the right thing to do. And I said that to Mr. So Ventresca. I said it to, to your dad. Mm -hmm. I mean, I believe that that's. That right now, with the amount of people we're getting down there, we need to do something with that route. And the two telephone poles that are there, I mean, you said we didn't meet with him to show him a concept plan. That was only a sketch plan that they did. I think we're, I no, have a, I have we're nowhere story. near. But what I don't understand is leaving the grass or not leaving the grass, what is your end game? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, for myself personally? Yeah. I'm trying to accomplish that when I look out of this expensive home that I just purchased out into what I thought was going to be this beautiful setting. It is. I now look down to a sidewalk and asphalt. Okay. That's not that's not good. Okay. Well, that's, you know, that's why And how many I'd like to ask you and, and with respectfully, how many people on this council does your opinion affect their ability to vote? None. You're telling me right now that you yourself. I'm only giving you my opinion. <laughs> okay. When will the next meeting be scheduled? We to meet discuss? the first and second Monday of every month. To discuss. Um, right now, nothing's the being discussed. Widening. Nothing. I mean, you're handing out flyers on first Friday, correct? I, well, I'm saying you're hand, you, you guys are creating an issue that, you know, there's no, there's been no discussion on the floor except. We had the engineer look into widening the, the road, okay? Mm -hmm. There's been no vote taken. There's been no meeting with Mr. Ventresca. So, I mean, we're in the early preliminary stages right now. Okay, but 
two years or three years from now if this bullet is still around. I don't know. I mean, I may not be around. here in two or three years. I'm left years. with a property. You, but what I'm saying is you want this borough to stop moving to do something that may improve the borough because you want to buy a home. That's not our problem. Mm -hmm. Our problem is to do what's right for the borough and the taxpayers. Well, and that's what I'm asking is do what's right for the borough. That's Doing what's right for the borough is to make the road wider. That's the right thing to do. But according to who? If we well, are the, we are have the an residents, engineer doing the it. Residents start, and you go to the residents and business owners in Bristol aware of this, and do they get a vote in any of this? Kurt, why don't you explain what's going on? Yeah, I mean, there's without a doubt there's a need to modify the, uh, the vehicular movements down at that corner. It's a terrible corner. We've seen a wonderful increase in foot traffic down there with the new docks and people going down to the waterfront and back. I mean, the volume alone, you know, we had to put stop signs in at the intersection recently. That's all based on, you know, that's and that's based on a warrant, a need, you know, the PennDOT has to sign off on. So, you know, there's, there's no doubt that the... Uh, configuration down there is, is not ideal. Uh, widening it will improve the turning movements. Um, and, you know, you, you made the point that there were cars parked there, and that, that's a problem. But you can't also have a cop just completely stationed there permanently. There's a need for people to want to, to park there. Uh, you know, there's loading and unloading that will occur for the docks. And so all of these different things are taken into consideration when we're asked to look at a bad situation and come up with recommendations. There is no chiseled in stone, this is what has to be or not has to be, but we looked at the whole intersection and um, came up with a couple concepts. Uh, you know, they all provide pros and cons, some slightly better than others, you know, but uh, that's where we are right now in, in the process. But there's absolutely a need to do something down there for the vehicular and pedestrian interactions. And all we are asking is to take a look at our proposal we're proposing that we can come up and solve this solution without getting rid of that park. Well, we need that particular area of the park so people can come, sit there, enjoy themselves, enjoy looking out at the river. Nobody sits and, there. Hmm? Nobody has ever sat there in all the years I've been going down there. Well, I don't know that, uh, I'll tell you what, somebody took the bench that sat right outside of our units away. People used to sit there all the time. Now it's missing. These would be two benches created we have, we have, for that one particular park. We have park. an enormous amount of space down there for people to sit around the gazebo and look at the river. There's benches. Okay. I mean, I don't know where this piece of land, and you want to know who owns the land. The borough owns the land. Okay. It's not a right away. Under what site, type of agreement does the borough own the land, though? I'm sure at one time it was owned by the state, right? I, I can't answer that. Okay, well, we can find that out. The solicitor probably could answer it. And um, so are you sort of telling me, like, don't continue to push on this fight? I, I don't think, I don't think, I mean, I don't even know how to explain this to you. I think that your builder needs to, I mean, you're just a, a resident or, I mean, you have no standing as far as the borough. You're not building this project. So I think your developer needs to come in, and he's been, Mr. Dillon had invited him I, in a few times. I am acting on, on a, his behalf. as an agent, yes. So I can tell you then how many problems there are down there? Absolutely. Okay, Not Kurt, a problem. why don't you, I don't know if she really that. you're acting on Joe Ventresca's behalf. Yes. Absolutely, yes, I do. Okay, so I can't do it. No, I would, I would want to see something. You would like to see a little. I have a note from Joe saying that he gives me permission to be so, to be. Um, so you know all the issues that are involved with this project. No, I don't know all the issues. Oh, well, I'm saying you want to if you're acting. But I, the issue I do know about is that there's an intention to widen the road. There is. And you're telling me there's no. You're not giving me any hope or glimmer of a hope that that may not happen. Why can't that be made into a one-way street? Why is that 23 foot Space not going to be a, prob a bottleneck or a problem with, you know, there's a lot of things that could be done. All right, Mayor, you want I, to I think he's just trying to communicate to you that even though in, in your mind and maybe the other people's mind you're supporting your effort, that this council has already made a decision to move forward. The only thing this council has done is put together, ask the engineer to put together what could be there. There's been no meetings, no approvals, no nothing. Well, I mean, what was the reason? 
What was the reason they were asked to put that specifically? Well, it's been a reoccurring challenge. Just explain it. It's been a reoccurring challenge for years. With all the different events we have, you can't get around that corner. It becomes a safety challenge when you have stalls down there and vendors and so forth. So we're looking at public safety. But the bottom line is there will be meetings. They'll be reported out what the borough is going to do. At this point, they haven't done anything. I think it's good for you to submit your concerns or your questions. Okay. But nobody has done anything other than asking the engineer to look at what could be done. That's it. We consider ourselves, we're at risk for purchasing these properties right now in this borough. But you should be talking to your developer because, I mean, we've been waiting for five years for this. I have absolutely no qualm with discussing with Joe those things. But I don't think that I should be told by council president that we're not, there's no shot in hell that we're going to get there. I didn't say that. You're putting words in my mouth. All he told you is there's no decisions that have been made. And he gave you his personal feelings about it. His feelings, his personal feelings. But there are no, there have been no meetings scheduled because we can't move forward until the developer comes in. Can't deal with the individual property owners. I mean, you can, you should make your concerns, you know, addressed to Mr. Van Dressen. I will talk to Joe tonight. Look, you're, you're welcome here any time you like. You know, you would call me and, and Al has called me to meet privately about this. I don't want to meet privately. Okay. I'm not meeting with anybody privately and, and you said this and I said, I'd rather meet in a setting. This way, like you just said, I said, I didn't say it was a done deal. I said, we're moving forward. We have the engineer looking at stuff. That doesn't mean tomorrow this is going to happen. But you think it's your personal opinion. We have a problem down there that needs to be resolved. Whether it's widening it, whether it's, we don't know what the solution is. Well, let us be part of helping solve the solution. But we can't bring people in on every decision this council makes. This isn't how it works. This council sits down with our planners and our engineers and we make the best decision we can as a council for what we think is right. If every time we vote on this council, we had to bring everybody in from every, you never accomplish anything. So it doesn't work that way. And it's no disrespect to you. Tomorrow we're going to decide we want to do something in another area of town. We'll listen to everybody's concerns, just like we're listening to yours right now. But the end result is these eight members have to make a decision. Okay. Now, what venue, when you said that we should get together, there should be a group. You're not going to meet one-on-one. Who is that group of people that we should meet with? That's the problem with meeting privately. What I said was, we meet here the first and second Monday of every month. You could come every month and voice your concerns. You could have questions. We'll get your questions answered to the best of our ability, whatever we can do. But as far as you, Mimi Olson, being part of this decision or any decision that this borough is going to make, it's not going to happen. This council is going to make a decision on what we're going to do down there. It may be seven to one. It may be four. I don't know what the vote's going to be, but we're not voting on something because we don't know what we're doing yet. Like you said, there's utility poles in a way. We have contacted PICO. They're probably going to move the poles. The gas company came out and lowered the gas line. You aware of that? I'm aware that they lowered the gas line. Okay, so there's things happening, but I don't think tomorrow or this summer you're going to see a, a road getting wider. I'm not telling you the following year that may not happen. I'm not telling you it's ever going to. I don't know what's going to happen. But when our engineer and we get done and we come up with a very solid plan for that area, we're going to monitor the traffic patterns this year how things go. We're going to sit down and we're going to make the best decision that we have to for the, for the taxpayers. Can we monitor the Pokemon people too? Because this, see, this is all created by this the Pokemon is the problem. people who this are is not the, spending money in this borough. But listen, not, Jimmy, we welcome everybody to come here. And the problem is you, it's like somebody buying a, a house near the High Lines. And then they start complaining they hear the trains all night. The trains were there before you bought the house. 
the river was there before Joe Ventresca bought the ground. So we're not changing anything for Joe or anybody else. We're going to make whatever decisions we have to for the borough. That park was there before I bought the house. Huh? What park? I didn't, listen, I didn't, nobody sitting here designed that property. Maybe it should have been designed different. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say he did the right thing or the wrong thing, but all I can tell you is there should have been maybe some things that he could have done prior to getting into this position. Okay. So, what do we do? From here on, I have to come to every council meeting. Oh, you don't have to come to anything. To to this. Well, how do I? How do we get our opinion out we're there? Gonna, you could. We're going to communicate with the builder. What about the meeting that was talked about? It was in September sometime. I'll find it. Where he was told by you, Mr. President. We didn't have a meeting yet. What do you want me to have a meeting for? What do you want me to tell him? Well, there's a proposal on the table. There's no proposals on the table. I, this council I, There's is a not, proposed conceptual plan. That that they did. There may be 50 more of them before anything's decided. Okay. And was it ever brought up at council the, the, and presented the, at the council meeting? I don't know. Did anybody see the plan, Kerr Drew? I didn't. Okay. So I don't know how you got a copy of it. How'd you get a copy of it? I'm not, I'm not going to disclose that. I do permit expediting is my business, so I I know some of the. But what I'm saying the is, for you to have a copy of it, mm -hmm. council had somebody from council had to give it to you. No, no, it wasn't. Well, it wasn't given out to the public. Oh, uh, you know the state has people I know too. The state. Yeah. What's the state got to do with it? Who? Who engineered the plan? Who do? I mean, there's a lot of ways I could have gotten it. So that's. I mean, I'm I don't want to. Huh? You want to come here. You want to be honest. Be honest. I, I you know, am like you're honest. saying, I'm you heard empty. a rumor that counsels against Joe Ventresca. That is one of the rumors. Okay, I've so heard, then why don't you tell us where you heard the rumor? I've heard one of the. Um, you the, heard that I'm mad at Joe. I mean, you heard all that. I heard a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, I have heard a lot of stuff. Good. And I welcome the stuff that you will inform me about it after I get Joe's approval to with Joe. So I can Maybe he'll have you put at a the little meeting. fire under him. Maybe too. Joe will invite you to the meeting. Okay. He'll bring you to the meeting. So if I work as his agent, would I be able to attend that meeting? If you what? If I am on board as his agent, will I be invited to attend Joe that meeting? Joe can bring you whether you're an agent or a friend or whatever. He could do anything he wants. He's okay. meeting with the borough. If he wants to bring you or five more people, that's that fine. meeting scheduled. Is nope. there a He's, again, let me explain it to you. We contacted Mr. Ventresca. Right. What did he say to us? That he's not ready for this month. They're okay. ready. For so how can we have a meeting scheduled if he's not ready? Well, how many months have you asked him that question? That's what I need. Now I'll, I'll get the I'll get his uh, signature that it's okay right. for me to ask. Let's try questions. to wrap this up. Does you, so, Tony, you want to say? Yeah, something? I just wanted to say. I mean, I'm listening. I'm I'm listening to uh, the uh, fine young lady over here, and Mimi. yeah, yeah, Mimi. And to me, it sounds simple. She wants to have a meeting with borough council or whoever's going to make that decision, which is engineers, us whoever, eight, we engineers to sit down with Joe, herself, and whoever else would have, sit down and figure out so we could work together to figure out something that works for both parties. So, okay, so I mean, how do we have the meeting until Mr. Ventresca is ready to schedule it? Right, that's what I, I agree so with. I'll, so you're what I'll do is I'll up. make sure Mr. Ventresca calls you. Don't call me. Well, who does he call to set up the meeting? Burrow. So he knows who to get in touch with. Ooh. He exactly. gets in touch with the so manager and the engineers. Mr. Dillon, is that yeah. who he gets a hold of? Okay. Tell him to send me an email. All right. All right. I will do that. And, and whenever. I hear our folders. I'm going to leave for everybody. Just put them on a desk. Right there. Okay. They're addressed to certain by council person. All right. We'll get them. You want to hand them to me, Mamie, so they don't fall? Here, Roger. Good job.
Do you have anything else, Mimi? No, I'm done for the day, but I think Al might have something he needs to, or wants to mention. Al. Sure. Just state your name and all for the record. My name is Al McCoola. I'm a proud dad of this lovely book. We have seven children, and uh, we were thrilled to come up here. I've known Ralph for quite a while. I don't know him personally, but I know about him, and he's a good man, and he's done a lot of good for this, this borough. What we're asking is for consideration for maybe a better way, maybe a way you didn't think of that we could that we have we have some drawings and things that you, you'll find in that folder that you may entertain and may say hey, this is a better idea. So right from what I understand right now, it's not locked in that proposal that we've there's, there's nothing Al that's been signed. There's nothing that's been etched in stone. <coughs> we are trying to do everything we can. To move this project along. And once we get an opportunity to meet with Mr. Ventresca, we may be able to solve a lot of the. I don't know. I mean, Kurt, you deal. I don't deal with it. I mean, you got a, I'm sure, pages of pages of stuff that needs to be resolved over there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe, just like me and everyone else here, we all need, from time to time, we need counsel. We need to talk and get, maybe get some things explained and find a better way. One of the things that's very, very disturbing is that we, this the property was like a, a Disneyland story to us. We were so happy about moving up here. Then I hear things like, well, we'll just throw a fence around their house. I heard that come out of this council from somebody. And, I, and that makes me very, very distressed. We're here to help support the, the borough. We want to be part of the borough. We don't want to be... be experience threats like that. And what we're asking you to please consider what we're, the things that we're proposing, and please let us be good neighbors. That's what we want to do. And we'll dedicate, we'll donate, whatever you need. The, the only bank. thing I can say is that we're doing nothing, nothing to stop that project to be completed. Well, hear that. As far as the, the project, I mean, you have an issue with the ground, or that's one thing. But as far as the project in a whole, this borough is doing everything they can to get that project completed. And I, I have heard that. I, I thank you very much. I, I was told there were some money issues, and they were resolved, and the borough very quickly got back to Mr. Ventresca. So I appreciate the borough's help. So please help us be good neighbors. Help us to survive there. And, and the part about the, about keeping making that park, maybe it never has been uh, spruced up or landscaped properly. We plan to do that. We plan to make that a very nice visual where people come off their boats and they see that and they want to take a rest of the bench. So you would rather have a bunch of people, 50 or 100 people, sitting out there every night? A bit. Okay. We, uh, That's right, good right to now. know. It's funny. We walk past people were, and we uh, walk past. They're looking at the house and they say, "Isn't this great? What's happening?" At, uh, okay. One more? I'm glad you said that. Yeah, but we don't. We, but it wouldn't well, like to have food trucks or vendors parked there, blowing the, the gas and the food smells into the house. There's other places well, they can go. And, uh, I mean, Mimi brought that up. We're never going to put vendors up on Mill Street. There's been ethnic festivals down there from well, but, before all back to, of us. It's getting back to money. That's another thing you may want to consider. I mean, and so if anybody wants to throw a fence up around our, our house, I think that's yeah. that's very mean. I don't know where you're getting your information. Yeah, that's what we like I to mean, know. I mean, I, we, to tell you the truth, not to burst your bubble, but we don't talk about your project in council. Well, how do you should start? Pardon? You should start talking about it. Why? It's it's very it's meaningful. Not, it's, there's nothing we can do. It's a meaningful. You're, it's you're a talking meaningful. about taking away the park. I, I don't. Half of that park got sold years ago by a council before us to the people that own. The restaurant at the time. Right. So the park already half of it's gone, and your building is right on the property line. Correct. And that probably, it, you know, in my estimation, that may be part of the problem here. Right. That every, you know, the footprint is built upon. We didn't create that issue, but we also have a zoning because whatever we do to you, we have to do to anybody else who has the same kind of situation. It's not that we think you're a good person or a bad person or we like the way Joe does something or we don't like it. 
There's a zoning law. There's building codes. We have to deal with those. We don't sit there and say, well, oh, we're going to put a fence around their project. Well, that's I mean, right. that's, 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 I don't right. know who's telling you that, but it's well, really. Well, I remember that was going to do and I, and I. Well, but you're coming up and you're saying it. Mimi said it, you're saying it. People are watching on TV thinking that we sit there, sit here and try to sabotage this project. Well, we you're don't not, even talk about it. You're not helping it, I'll tell you that. That's, that's, that we like to, like to be well, part uh, of this. PennDOT came in and surveyed the area. They put two stop signs up. We didn't tell them, we didn't agree to it. They did the survey and they put two stop signs up. So you're making a decision on whether they're taking that park area and have the council. It's, well, you're saying a park area. It's a little triangle it's there. A, it's, it's not. It's it's across the street is a park. No, it's not. It's 20 percent of that whole area is right in front of our house. There's nothing left by the river either. Before you know it, it's all going to be going if you keep working with this way. Uh, Eric, so Eric, this is the part that's really mind-boggling to me. First of all, I don't know what you want us to do. I want to to, listen, forget I want about to, the, forget to get this project done. All I want you to do is to look at some other considerations. Okay, let's put this, this let's man, put He's a the, smart man, right? He's a very smart man. Now, let's put, but, Excuse me a one minute. Way. Let's put the park issue aside. Let's take that off the table. Okay. What, when does this project want to get done? What are we doing to hold up the project? I never said you were holding it. Okay, so this but is I, what I did. We are saying we, we, we think it's the mean thing to do to, to all the people that attend that park, taking away that the, the, the grass and the the pleasantry. Okay, and that's an opinion you have. And a lot of people. And I respect opinion. that opinion. I'm not saying I don't respect it. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, and I think Louis, I feel his frustration that this council is being criticized for this project not being finished or being completed when that. there are numerous, numerous, numerous issues well, we're gonna help you with move this them project. Well, look, we're going to help you move them along. We're working with you out. And, uh, I mean, you know, this engineer has tried everything he can to get this project finished. The borough has tried everything to get this project finished. So this piece of ground that you're talking about is a moot point right now. That has nothing to do with this project coming to completion. I never this said borough, that. it's been five years maybe. This project's still going on. Getting close to that, yeah. So, I mean, think about what you're saying. This issue just came up six months ago. We are doing nothing but trying to get this project finished. Okay. You're so, also, you're I think also... you need, and Mimi said she represented Mr. Ventresca, and the solicitor said without a letter. I mean, I would get into a lot of things with you. And every any councilman also, here wants. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll get together because we nobody wants it more than we do. We're supposed to make it up last uh, July, Ralph. Mm -hmm. Last July, it's been over a year. So we know we know the pain you're feeling. We're feeling more pain because we want to we want to move in there. My daughter is just driving her family. But crazy. the ground has nothing to do with you moving in. I didn't say it did. Okay, what I'm saying that's what I'm trying to get make it clear to everybody that this ground. Has no all, bearing uh, but all on this board, project. When we, when we do move in, that maybe maybe uh, our engineers could could take an idea or two from from someone else. Maybe they can. Yeah. So it's I'm not. Okay, we're not good. just shutting the door in your face, saying we're not willing to talk to you. Nobody's doing that. That's what, that's what we're saying board. is we Where's also it? have nothing to do with the project. Okay. Well, uh, all we're asking for is a little consideration, being good neighbors, moving into the area. I mean, I don't think the last thing we want to do is just say, why do we want to live here with all this craziness? But thank you for the audience, and we're going to continue going forward for you. All right. Anybody else would like to speak on anything? Go to the podium and state your name. I think you had enough. No, nah, we're here all night. It doesn't matter. Um, hi, my name is Lauren Panzano. I'm not a business owner. Not one of the wealthier families in the area. Not, not one a long, lot, Lauren? Not one of the wealthier families in the area. Not a longtime resident. But I moved here because I fell in love with it the first time I came here. I know it's not something that has really been kind of of concern. I know it's not something where there's a definite on it yet. 
but just maybe as one of the younger people who moved here because I fell in love with it and saw the charm. And when I have friends come visit, they call this place Pleasantville because everyone is just lovable and kind in the way that it looks and the way that our waterfront is. So I guess more so for me, I just, I like being able to be a younger person in the area who kind of wants to say, maybe it's not the biggest chunk of land there. Maybe it isn't technically the biggest piece of the park. But for me, aesthetically, it's even just that little bit of green that's left there in front of what is now just a building on a waterfront, which no offense to people that I love that are in this gorgeous new waterfront home. But to me, it's at least a nice little aesthetic in front of it to kind of have some kind of diversity between asphalt and then another building. It makes it look more homey. It makes it keep kind of that feel there. So even though there's nothing that's definitely been done yet, but I like the fact that there's other plans that are kind of in action about it and other ways to go around it. So I'd like to, I don't know, I guess I've never really come or been very active, but when it comes to park stuff, I'm kind of a nerd. So <laughs> um, I don't know, but I appreciate the fact that there are, there are other options that are at least being weighed out. I don't want to see any of the park touched. That would be ideal, but I suppose with increased traffic in the area, especially after kind of just having the most beautiful mean street. I think what we're trying to do and, and be good neighbors to everybody. And I think the last time we spoke, matter of fact, we were down there for the dock meeting and a few of us were talking about landscaping along the, but the other problem is, do you start putting up Harvard Whitey's and things like that, then the people say, they're sitting at the restaurant. The tr so you got to find a happy medium, and that's what we're trying to do. Which but as far as the road getting wider, I don't foresee that. We wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't widen that road as a, as, a, as a borough. I understand that it's a bottleneck. But and whether it gets landscaped, whether it gets a couple park benches, that all could be come into play. We're not ruling anything like that out. but. To do, to do what's right, if you go down there and you see Cisco <coughs> trucks trying to back into the King George, they go over the curb, they can't get in, there's trucks up on the hill trying to get in. It's a congested area, and it's getting more congested, and a lot of the seniors are telling us, why can't we get dropped off for events down <coughs> there? There's no <coughs> drop-off spots, so maybe there's going to be some handicapped parking. We don't know yet. So for me to sit here and say, this is the plan, I'd be lying to you. Because I've, I've understood that there's no definite plan. Just no, there is not a definite plan. So when you hand out your flyers and you were saying, wait a minute, you were saying a four-lane highway? No, I said no, four, no, I said four, no, for a four, like a four-lane area there. So basically, either way, it's still good. I'm sorry, I'm really not good at speaking. No, nah, that's um, right. You're, you're doing fine. good. You're fine. You'll be a pro by the end of this. I'm really not good at being super assertive. Nah, you're good. So you're fine. Well, I just thought it would be really nice to maybe have, my approach was more trying to get younger people in the community, because that's... So you don't, don't want to get rid of the Pokemon people, do you? If I'm being honest, I think it's kind of a pain in the bun sometimes, just because they'll be all congested <laughs> in one little area, but... <laughs> That's not nice. I haven't gotten I haven't gotten to personally observe the parking issues, but I do I I have seen them. I have seen so that's something major, I have major problems with uh, when there's trucks backing in, like <coughs> Ralph was saying, into the King George to deliver um, beer and whatever. Uh, there's been so much traffic in there, and it's really scary. Like, we don't want anybody to hit anyone, you know? Because they come in masses. <laughs> John, do you have a question for her? Yeah, well, not really a question. I just, what, I was just wondering, what, what would be the drawback of just having that as a one-way? I mean, just looking at it, what would be the drawback of it? There really wouldn't be a drawback. Like, there wouldn't really be a drawback. If when you think about it, all the other roads that go down to the main parking lot, they're all one ways. Right. No, I was talking to our the council president and council. What would I don't understand? Like, what would be a drawback to it? I don't. Some Kurt has to look uh, at. They're forcing all the all the trucks and the traffic up. That's right. Trucks exit down. Trucks exit down. All right. We will take that under consideration. 
Thanks, Lauren. Thank you. Lauren, do anybody else on this side of the room want to speak on anything? Anybody else have anything? Go to the podium, please. Hi, my name is Becca Olson, and I am a business owner and a newly resident in the borough. Um, I not really going. I'm not. You know, not even going to go into that. I'm going to go into it in the sense of I feel that. I mean, there's obviously rumors that are that go around like it's a bottleneck. It's you know, it's a hazard. There's you know, not enough like room for pedestrians to walk. And even just being down there, I even at nighttime, it gets it gets confusing with the way you can go and different. Even the stop signs are new. I can't tell you how we have tailies when we sit outside of the cantina. Who's going to stop? Who's not going to stop? But I think I mean I've talked to. I did talk to Robert from the King George, and I had asked him how his deliveries, you know, how they do come in and come, how they make their deliveries. And he said that, you know, they come in through Mill Street and they go in and they back up into the. So for me, I had asked him if he, you know, had a problem with it being a one way and, you know, being able to dump out into the parking lot. And that would be the exit way from Mill Street. I mean, I can't say that, honestly, I ever come up from the parking lot onto Mill Street that way. Um, I just think it would be easier. That it, would, it would create space for people to walk their dogs, people to walk, people to be on their first feet, people to people, people to be. I think that area to widen it, to get rid of the, sp the grass, the sidewalk, I think it would create more of a hazard than in the long run than it would to just, I don't think we should ride in it. I'm sorry. Well, just, just before you leave, I'm, thank you for your opinion. But you need, to, there's a lot that goes into these decisions. You got right. emergency management, you got fire trucks, you got EMS responding to things. So is there a way for so me to get a site plan for the King George and the, like a property? Google map. Google map it. Okay, there if you want. Just go into like the borough zoning. It shares the property on There is a zoning map. There. Well, I know there's a zoning map. I, I've done zoning <coughs> for a couple of years. I'm just curious as is there an actual map that shows the property lines? Zoning map. Oh, zoning map. Tax map. Tax map. Yeah. And there are stakes in the ground that Mr. Ventresca put in, and his deck is about an inch away from his property. But it shows me for, I'm talking about for the King George as well. What do they own? Like, yeah, where the area is that's owned. King George owns the building they're in. The sidewalks are right-of-ways. So they're owned by the borough? Uh, the right-of-way is owned by the owner at some point. So like the back patio of the King George that's owned by the borough? No, it's owned by the King George. Okay. Cool. We own the road. <coughs> Yeah. Right. So that patch of grass behind the, the townhomes is owned by the borough? Owned yeah. by the borough. Okay. Coming down the hill, the sidewalk. So when it was a restaurant, was it owned by the restaurant? No. No? Okay. The sidewalk is a right-of-way. Okay. There's two different things. All right. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Anybody else on this side of the room want to speak on any issue? We're here the first and second Monday of every month. Okay, anybody on this side came in new? That ends public participation. Lorraine, what do you have? What about the chief? You don't want to let the chief? Chief, I forgot all about you. <laughs> let me just go real quick. So next week on how long you guys want to be here. But again, more importantly, it's just as everybody knows, it's been extremely busy in town, especially with the warm weather. Um, last Friday it was extremely challenging with the crowds in town and also our responses to our neighboring community because of the tragedy that occurred across town. Um, but 
we handled it. Um, we had a couple of arrests up in the Harriman section regarding some car burglaries, and we have some uh, progress working on the Penn Street shooting. We are going to be asking the council for a need for substitute crossing guards again, at least two, possibly three. I memo to Mr. Dillon regarding the hiring of a part-time patrol officer, Kevin Riley, who is a Bucks County Ranger. Again, this will be no budget increase, but it, it, when we have officers like this on a part-time basis who are involved with other municipalities or Act 120 certified, it just leaves our pool and our flexibility. Um, officer Webb participated in the Cops and Kids Delaware Valley Reading Program at Senator Girardi. It was very well received. And next week is National Police Week. And we'll be uh, presenting several commendations to officers for events that occurred during 2017 and also recognizing the retirement of K-9 Kilo. That's it. Any questions for the chief? Chief, I just want to say thank you to you and the police department for, um, I know you've had a really busy week and uh, I'm glad that everyone's safe in our department and thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, wait, I have oh, some, I'm yeah. sorry. That's right, you didn't I thought you, he said it? to talk to the police. Anybody yeah. else want to talk to the police, right? No. Yeah, but I went to you because... Okay, um, Mr. Dillon, I just want to know what's happening with uh, Mill Run? Uh, I think they're moving ahead. Uh, I think council may want to uh, ask someone to come in and give council an update on uh, the project and their timetable and... Uh, have that discussion maybe at your uh, June work session. I would like that. I would like them to come in because it hasn't looked like they've been doing too much there. And I, I want to see what the heck's going on. I've been getting a lot of questions from my neighbors, people that are interested in living there, people that are, you know, and uh, it just has been a looks like a standstill. So I would really like for them to come in in June. That would be great. Can you make arrangements? I will. Thank you. That's it. Tony. Yeah. A um, couple questions. Uh, the first thing I have is, Mr. Dillon, can we get the, um, the road crew to do a couple things? The first thing is on Route 13, the medians that we elected to cut and the areas where we come into to the town where the lights are, so right across from Burger King, the uh, Dunkin' Donuts area, those bushes are just collecting debris, plastic bottles, bags, wrappers. So we can get you know somebody out there to clean that. And the second thing I would like for them to do is, today I was up, up at the baseball fields and our, our swing sets on the playground there's three out of four that are broken. We're aware. And they're wrapped around. I don't want any kids are going to get their fingers or something stuck in those chains. So if we could at least get those things down if they're if we're mean, not able to fix them. Can I just go back to the first two things? Yeah. The grass has never been accepted by the borough. Mm -hmm. So we are not cutting it because it was never put in to our specifications. So right now the state is maintaining the medial strip. Okay, so not even the bush area. We're not doing anything. Okay. We have nothing to do with that at this point. We gotcha. said that a few times before. Mm -hmm. So just so you know, the second thing well, is. Let me just add in the medial little strip in front of the Dunkin' Donuts uh -huh. and uh, Burger King is in the township. It's their responsibility with anybody. Okay. Townships. And the states. That's what I was going to say. But no, but the one that's catty corner across, that's in front of the. It's going to be the states it's anyway. If we're not states, state state right? Because we're not doing it anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then, as far as the playgrounds, there was vandalism there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was going to ask the chief. I don't know. Sure, we're the chief or no. I received an email from Mr. Dillon just regarding some trash cans knocked over and stuff like Sway, that. They think they broke three swing sets or. Going on there. Yeah. Um, I guess the other question I have, I have another question. This is probably more for uh, Mr. Miller, but there is a resident that, how do we handle this situation? We have a landlord that took a deposit of like $3,400 
And before the, the resident moved into the property, they realized that there was an infestation of bugs. And they never took the property. And now this resident cannot, didn't move in and now cannot get in touch with the landlord. I'd suggest he or you send me an email and we'll tra check it out. There's okay. No way. I have no idea, you know, no address. Nothing. But no, no, I, I don't want to put it out on public, uh, public view for right now, but I will send that to you when I go home. All right. The next couple things I want to talk about is <clears throat> now in the paper we talked about 10 years ago, there was a there was an agreement made with the Redevelopment Authority about the properties on Chestnut and Elm Street. So the, the, the reason why that's frustrating is that every time that I brought it up about what are we doing, what is the plan with these properties, it was always, well, we don't know. We, well, it could be this or it could be, there was never a plan. But 10 years ago, there was enough of a plan or, or uh, foresight to get the redevelopment to sign an agreement that they're going to take on the property. So to me, I think there's, this is the problem I think that people have is why they would believe that there's only a certain couple of people that make decisions. So it's not just, you know, the eight council members here, you know, the, the public themselves. So some of the things that you guys aren't aware of, the minority of council also are not aware of. So like to me, <clears throat> I'm just frustrated as a council person. Somebody had ran and knocked on every single door and, you know, and campaigned that we don't get we don't we don't get informed of the information that you know the, the majority of council has. So just saying that. So the next question I have is, what what would be the purpose of the RDA if we're spending our money on these properties? What would the RDA have to do with any of it? Oh. Just to, I don't want to burst your bubble, yeah, but just to answer bubble. your first question, there is no agreement with the RDA. Oh, so whatever was written Everything in Everything you just said about this council oh, is false okay. because there is no agreement with right. the RDA. So what this we read in the paper would is have not to, true. What's this? So what was in the paper is not true. Uh, what, what I think you read, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure because I don't read the paper, okay. is that Council probably at some point will turn this ground over to the redevelopment authority to market the property. And we would have to vote on signing an agreement with the RDA, which was never brought up to council yet. We talked about it a couple times, saying that once we acquire whatever ground, the, the smart thing to do is to turn it over to them. So for you to go through this litany of campaigning and nobody knows anything and it's a shame you sit here mm -hmm. and you've been here for, I don't know, five, six years, whatever. I don't know where you got that information that we newspaper. turned it over to the RDA. Well, don't but, believe everything you read in a newspaper. Well, I just said, I mean, I just, so I that's, just happened to just believe to let it. You know. I mean, you I could just, just believe everything you said. Divine. All you had to do was say, do we have an agreement with the RDA? Wouldn't that be easier? Because I read in the paper and I thought maybe that was kind of comical since I brought it up numerous occasions, and I got the same answer. And it was Mr. White who said that they signed an agreement about 10 years ago, or they had an agreement well, I think 10 we have years a ago. A, it's a cooperation agreement with the RDA. Okay, but what I'm yeah, saying is, the, so you talked about the properties with Mr. White, I'm sure, huh. and the Redevelopment Authority. No. Huh. No. Okay. All right. So the next. Let part, me let me finish because yeah. I don't want to let this go. All right. Fair enough. The borough has a cooperation, just like probably almost every. Our own township mm -hmm. with the RDA on anything that we may want to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's cleared up. Now, what's your next question? All right, so the next thing with the RDA, what, so we're spending taxpayers' money. So right now we spent close to probably $2 million, so we'll probably spend another what? Half a million dollars? So two and a half million dollars of taxpayers' money that's going in to buy these properties. Mm -hmm. So why would we? What is the purpose now? Of, I don't know. That's why I'm asking the question. Is what would? What's the purpose of turning it over to the RDA if we're using our money? Like I don't understand. What do they do for us at that point? Well, 
First of all, they're eligible for all kind of grants and different. Why don't you explain it? To yeah, them? I don't want to waste. So my the time. same thing. Not wasting your time. It's a question. I'll let the people the No, that's a good question because Thanks. we've done this with Mill Run, mm -hmm. and I think we've done it with some other things. The RDA number one has access to infrastructure grants that we don't. Number two, they can negotiate with the. If we were to turn this over to them pursuant to an agreement, they can negotiate with the last property owners, which we can't do. Okay, and they can then go out and seek developers who might be interested in developing this and working with us, of course, to see what it is we want there. So this is something that every municipality does. It's a great thing in Pennsylvania. We worked with the RDA, but we have no agreement with them for that property. I don't know where they came from, uh, and it's a shame that instead of reading the paper and, and taking it as true, you just don't ask somebody. Because if you had asked Mr. Dillon, he would have said there's no agreement. But anyway, so that's why we go to the RDA. We don't have to, but they give us options and they give us access to money that could produce a, a project that we can't do. So it's what we did with Mill Run. It worked out very well. I think we did it with uh, taking down the powerhouse. Uh, the, the previous, there's been councils working with Bob White's for 1986. Right. No, I just on those. Oh, it's a uh, it's a good tool to have them to, to get things done. Right, and I understand that about properties that maybe it's have not any, only properties. But, it could be anything. All right. Well, can I finish? So the the properties that we have, the mill run, I understand because it had an owner. These properties we're buying up. We're the owners. So it's not like we need money to. To purchase or to help purchase, we're buying. We're using taxpayer money to already purchase them. Right. So it, it's not the same as no, no run or the other. Mr. Devine, yeah. we, it's always our money. The RDA doesn't put up money for us to buy properties. It's always our money. They just can negotiate it differently, or they could take the property by eminent domain. We paid for Mill Run, not the RDA. We paid for the power. I'm only going by because you told me they could deal with the owners. That's what you said. All right. Well, but we're still, we, we bought still it, we're pay different. for it. All right. That's fine. All right. So now the, the other thing, and I've been talking about this for a while, is that you have Elm Street and you have Chestnut Street. So it's going to cost taxpayers two and a half million dollars. So, I mean, again, we always talk about looking at this as a business. So what is your return on investment and when does it happen? So the taxpayers are paying $2.5 million for these properties. <coughs> Where is the break-even point? How many houses can we build on those properties? Say everything is bought and that we use the RDA to get us some grant money to you know, tear the thing down or do whatever. So let's say all said and done, we're going two and a half million dollars. How long, how many houses can we put on that property? And Ralph, you're a builder, so you have an idea of how many houses can we get there? It's, it's really it. A tough question to answer because you don't know what ground, what roads, retention basins. If it's homes, it may not be homes. I mean, if I had my wish, and I'll tell you after the meeting, mm -hmm. I think that there's something that could be done there, which I really don't want to go public with it, yeah. that I think would be a great fit for that area. And, and how long would it take? For us to recoup that two and a half million dollars with taxes, yeah, with taxes. Well, if you're talking homes, I mean, a, a new home probably the minimum they're going to pay is around eight thousand dollars a year in taxes. Sixty percent of that goes to the school. Uh, Twenty-four percent, I think, goes to us. Sixty-six percent to the school. It's just not taxes. We're going to yeah. get paid. The borough is going to get paid when, when you sell, sell the, the property ground. to the developer. Okay. I mean, that's that's all your, you're you're going to get all your permit fees and anything that's going on there. So, you know, you just there's there's times where you sell property and you you know, like Sunday's paper. I mean, you know, the guy wants 20 percent profit and get his money back. Half of the country would like to get their money back on a property that they they bought over the last 20 years. I mean, the economy went in a tank. There's people paying $2 million for homes, forget about, and they lost 20, 30 percent. They can't sell them or they're underwater or people overpay for <clears> things. So 
We have never appraised a property on Chestnut or Elm Street based on a street that was boarded up. We always told the, the guy that did the appraisals to base that home like it was somewhere else. Okay. And, you know, because you paid $100,000 for a house and it's only worth 70, put anywhere, forget about just Chestnut Elm Street, and it's only worth 70, it's not fair for us to, and we can't by law give you more than that appraised value. You know, we could go $1,000 either way or something like that, but we just can't say, you know what, we're going to give you 100000 and only appraise for seventy. That's where the RDA comes in, and they might be able to say, you know what, we can negotiate this deal, and we'll give you the 100 to okay. get, you know. Right. So that's a tool that we don't have. That's one example. No. So the problem that I have is that once, if, if we're talking about, all right, we paid a certain amount of money, bought a house for 100 but it's only worth 70 now. We don't want to pay. I understand that. Right. But as taxpayers, we're spending $2.5 million on property. For what is somebody going to be, what would somebody buy that parcel of land for? I have no idea. Dollar? I mean, ballpark. What would they spend? I have no idea. You have to have an idea. Don't you have to have an idea? I mean, no. That's what you do. Ten right? million. Ten million? That's a good number. Happy. That's a great number. That, now that's a good deal. So we can say we're not going to deal with the redevelopment authority now. Excellent. I have no idea. All right. So what, what I'm saying is this: if, if if you put houses there, and I just did like just simple math, if you put ten houses there, each house would have to make up two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in taxes. So it would take. Based on, I did it off of $7,000 taxes, and the school's getting 65, we're getting 35%. So each house, we would get 20, 2,450 bucks for each one. So at that level, with 10 houses, if you built, it would take 102 years to get that money back. You know, now there's other things that are included, I understand, but I'm just talking just general. If you built 15 houses at the same rate, it would take, it would take, 15 houses would take 68 years. If you built 20 houses, it would take 51 years to recoup that money. So what I'm saying is, if we don't get, I mean, if, if we're not making a good amount of money off that property or land, we're basically throwing money out anyway. You know what I mean? And I feel the same way. Like, those people that lived on those streets, Chestnut and Elm Street, I mean, it's, it was, it's totally unfair to them because as we're buying houses, we're boarding them up. And these people, even if somebody was interested in buying a house, they can't even get homeowner's insurance. So, like, to me, it's like we're, we're basically squeezing these people out. And then on top of it, we get on people in the borough for not taking care of their properties. But us as homeowners ourselves for, for, these, for these two streets or these houses that we own, these properties, we got roofs caving in. We got squirrels and cats and everything else running through these people's houses. And what are they supposed to do? And then they have to, you know, basically, you know, they're going to take whatever they can to get out. I just, I just feel freaking terrible about it. I think we all do. But what is the solution? Tell me what the solution is. The solution to me, and I don't know exactly how, but I'm a, I'm a giver. I'm a, I'm a person that I think that those homeowners, not the people who are landlords that bought properties and rent them out, people who were owner occupied and they're getting. You know, they're getting the, you know, the, the raw end of this deal. I mean, I would like to be able to see if on Elm Street, what's left on there? Two houses and we got well, one that's already. We had, we had one appraised, which we'll talk about tonight. Right. So, like to me, I would like to be able to see those people, they stuck around or whatever, they, they, they held on. I mean, what's 55 grand going to be to somebody who's going to be retiring? Where are they going to go? What are they going to move? Like, what are you going to do with 55 grand? But listen to me. We didn't call anybody to sell the borough. No, I understand. Property. I'm not saying. They I'm not blaming the you. The borough, by law, sends someone out to do an appraisal. The appraisal comes in at fifty-five thousand dollars. We can't say, you know what? We really like you. We're going to give you seventy. I understand. So, what do you want? Tell us what we should do. But what I, all I'm saying is this: it's those people that are there are getting the raw end of the deal. Okay, That's what I'm what saying. What do you want us to do? 
Well, the first thing is give it's, extra money. Right at, no, at this point, at this point, it's too late. I mean, it's already down that road. You know what I mean? But you got house there. But those people couldn't stay there. You know what I mean? They couldn't stay there. So it's like, why can whoever's going to be that developer? Let's just act like we got a plot of land across from Elm Street. Why couldn't somebody give them a house for what we would give them? Maybe that'll happen. Uh -huh. You never know. But you're doing 10 houses, 20 houses. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the little parcel on Riverfront North is 100 and what? With the condos and all. 100 and what? Over here. The, the one that. Island View. Island View. How many? What's that? 196? 174, I think it was. Total units. 190 something? 170 something. 170 some units. So, I mean, the numbers you're running are, are you know. Well, that area is a lot bigger, don't you think? Well, it's not that much bigger. There's only so many acres over there. But a point of interest on that, where you were talking about how long? Mm -hmm. 1986, we borrowed $2 million to buy that property. Mm -hmm. It took us 14 years to develop, to clean up that property. And look what's there. You have the retirement community. Mm -hmm. We brought over 600 jobs here with Lennox and the other companies. Right. But that was because the people sitting there had enough vision to say, look, we, there were factories there that, you know, you would have never been able to what take What do we down. use to buy? We use taxpayer money? Taxpayer. I thought I was going to get run out of town because I made the motion <laughs> to borrow $2 million to buy that property in 1986. But it took us almost 14 years. to clear. If it wasn't for the Redevelopment Authority, it would never happen. Right. Because they went out and got federal loans. They got state loans. They brought people in. Not only to clean it up. And, you know, the congressmen, everybody were involved. But it was a, a working agreement that we had with the council and the redevelopment authority. And to this day, I mean, it, you'd have to be crazy not to work with them. And we've been fortunate enough not to borrow any money so far for this project. And, and just another point, Ralph. It annoys me a little bit about Elm Street and Chestnut Street because I think we all feel really bad about what happened there. But you know what? We didn't create that problem, and neither did those poor people that own their houses. It's those slum landlords who bought five properties, six properties, eight properties, ran them into the ground, sucked the rent out, roach infested, and then said, oh, Mr. Burr, would you like to buy these? And, and that's what happened. And you know that's what happened. Well, I mean, I'm just looking at it in the sense of... You hit the nail. You hit the nail. Nobody sitting here would... We'd love to be able to do something. But... And, and I think... Where was the up... Joe, where was the upkeep, Mayor? Where was the upkeep on the property? At Once the we bought those houses, aren't we responsible for them? No, at that point, we tried to secure them so they wouldn't deteriorate anymore. You know... There's giant holes in them. The roofs, there's, well, there's, well, there's, those properties there's squirrels and cats and everything else. I think we, we go out... We can create them. No, but it's a we own them, them, we got to take care of them, don't we? Well, I think we should secure them. You know, when everybody forgets, Three of them, about even with the Courier thousand. articles, and they've never talked to, you know, they, they quote, well, you're quoted in there, so they must have a, you know, they have some credence in what you're telling them. But credence in, I don't understand what you mean. Well, they don't, they don't call any of us. They, they, you know, you're because, always because. There. They, they say they call, and you guys won't speak. The only one that speaks is Ralph. I speak because I'm my own person. I never get a phone call from them. Because you're only going to say the same thing Ralph says. That's what okay. Why was it? Why would they waste their time? They already know that then. That's right. Fair enough. But you forget about, you know, we had homes on Trenton Avenue. Yep. That was there. They're wiped out. Mm -hmm. Beautified the area. You had the other side of Elm Street. Weren't there houses there? Burnt down. Yeah. Okay. If we took, bought them and took them down, I mean, it's a blighted area. So you can't say we put two million dollars into it. How are we going to get our two million back? Sometimes you just got to take it on the chin. If something's bad, you got to, you know. Now, if if the borough had gone ahead and said, okay, we're going to condemn it, get the redevelopment authority in there and condemn it. You'd be the first guy complaining. I'm still complaining. You would complain that we're moving people out of their homes. Yeah. So the borough took the stance that as they come available, we buy them. And you're still complaining. Because you don't understand. So, it's not the idea, Lou, of buy, it's maintaining them so people that are living there still have a decent well, existence. I, Tony, I think we do a good job. I mean, if we're aware of a problem, they cut the grass, 
They clean up. The houses are boarded. The plywood's painted on the porch. They try to do the best we, they can. You also, if you remember, we said, let's rent them. Am I right? When we bought them, I don't know, was it how many off Dr. Davison? Well, Nine <laughs> on Chestnut. Mm -hmm. Well, right now, out of the, you know, the ones that were rentable, I mean, we probably got about 5,000 or more rent that we can't even collect. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that didn't work out. And then they were ripping cabinets off the wall and drains blocked us. So we just started evicting people. So that's where you're wasting taxpayers' money by, you know, not getting paid and repairing things. Right. I, but the focus, see, here's the thing about it. We're focusing so much attention on this one area. But there's other properties in the north ward that are you want to rip them down it, there's a couple that should be i think yeah uh, why because i think why do was, you want to rip them down because there was one on Buckley Street that had a fire in it wasn't there there's, i mean there's one there that should be probably looked into at least right but you're you're saying we shouldn't be tearing properties down no no i'm saying you have to look at each one individually right you, okay. uh, we're talking about a whole row of homes that we needed to maintain as a borough that's all i'm saying Listen, it's a, the, the point is moot now because it's it's 20 years later and the damage is done. I'm just speaking my okay. piece. That's okay. <clears throat> what else you got? That's it. Lily? Uh, <coughs> I just want to make it, well, Mr. Gerard's not here, but the apology wasn't for him. My apology is if, uh, when I said uh, you're a roofer. And I hope other roofers aren't offended. Uh, like I told Mr. Gerard, after two two attorneys give their opinions, and he says he doesn't he doesn't agree with their opinion. He has a different opinion. And I said you're a roofer. If he said his lawyer had a different opinion, I might go for it. But I don't want anybody to think I'm <coughs> demeaning roofers or contractors. <coughs> I spent my whole life, my family's you know. We're tradespeople, and I spent my life working with them and friends of them. So I didn't mean it to be derogatory to roofers. I meant it, I told Mr. Gerard I wouldn't ask Mr. Salerno for his opinion on my roof. So I don't need his opinion for legal matters. So for that, I I want to apologize if I ruffled anybody's feathers other than Dave's. That's all I have. Tony. Uh, Tony speaking about uh, properties. Um, the last several months I've been in touch and have met with uh, Mr. Dillon and uh, John Miller regarding 158 Buckley Street. Uh, it's been vacant uh, for, for many years. John Miller condemned it several years ago. Um, it's in it's it's actually, it's in deplorable condition, and the, the back of the house is actually separating off. John Miller's recommendation was to acquire it, and it needs to be a standalone house. Uh, but it needs to be, in my opinion, I, I think it needs to be taken down. If we could have the borough engineer take a look or something, or uh, but it's just it's. it's in, is there somebody who still owns it? Yeah, it's not bank owned. I think they still own it. I, I know the bank was out there because um, it was going through the foreclosure process. And they looked at it and they said, we're not touching it. So there's nobody, you know, the bank doesn't want to take responsibility because of, you know, and, and the people, the people that were owning it, they keep dumping stuff back there. We lean the property, we clean it up, we lean it, we clean it up, we lean it. It's just like, it's, it's, it's not, you know, but I, I know that the part of the back of this, the, the structure is actually separating from the main structure. Um, so I don't, I don't, any, I don't know. So you want us to try to buy this house and rip it down? Yeah, I think that's I, I, it, what John Miller's recommendation was to, you know, tear it down. Or at least, I, I, I don't know, I think we tried to get them to, uh, I think we've taken them to court to have them fix it, to put it into a condition to where it's safe. It's not even safe at this point. Well, I mean, I, I think we have a inspection program put in place that if there's a property that's unsafe, we could force the homeowner to come in and take the house down. I mean, that's just, I don't know. Don't you think? 
There's no plumbing, there's no heating. The, but nobody's the living in it, right? Correct. So what I'm saying is I think that under the building code or property, what do you, what's it called? The maintenance. Property maintenance. Building code. Um, we don't we have a vacant, what's that word? Blight committee. Blight or whatever. Under blight. I mean, maybe they can condemn the property and then force the homeowner to take it down. Is that something that the redevelopment authority could help out with, or no? They don't not with that, not with blighted no. properties. The redevelopment authority loans people money to make this. And I announced this numerous times, interest-free, to do certain repairs on your house, and you don't pay them back until you sell the property, which is a, is a great tool that they have to help people. I don't know if the program's still in place, but I mean, at one time, nobody wanted it. I don't know why, but you know, seniors or whoever, if you fall under a certain income, they would, you know, fix your porch, put a heater in, <coughs> you know, really help people out that, that needed it interest free. So if you live there for another 50 years, you don't pay that money back until you sell the property. So I don't know. I mean, can we look into it? Look into it and see what's acquiring, right. the, acquiring the property for free, sir. Well, first of all, you got to get them to agree to sell you the property. Then you got to, if it's it, if if they're underwater, then you go back to the Chess and Elm Street thing. Yeah, and there's a lot of. If there's a lot of money owed, uh, there's a home on Lafayette. Let me just tell you right now, there's a home on Lafayette Street that is was a reverse mortgage. They gave the people 189,000. The house is destroyed. When I tell you destroyed, it's not worth twenty-five thousand. So there's an example that are we supposed to go in and say, well, you know what? The house is abandoned. Nobody's. It's on my block, not my. You know that four hundred block. Are we supposed to go in and say, well, let's give them the hundred eighty-nine thousand and the barrel, you know, take a hit on it? So everything right now is so. With the banks and the foreclosures, they, the banks don't want these homes because they know if they take that home back, they're never going to get their money for it. So no, I, I, you I, would I, understand, well, then why don't you just sell it for whatever it's worth and let somebody go in and rehab it and flip the house? So I don't know. I mean, if they keep scheduling foreclosure, the neighbors. So, you know, they're on their water. There's nothing you're going to do for that bank ever to get their money back. And it could be the same thing here. You don't know if the bank's holding a hundred or $150,000 mortgage on this house. So even if we said we want the house and appraises it 20000 until that bank says, 20, we'll yeah. take the twenty. That house is going to sit there. It could be there another 10 years. At this point, it's, it's, it's unsafe. I mean, if you walk over there, it's, it uh, really is, the, like I said, the back of it is literally If the bank would take it, but the see, banks, the, banks the bank really doesn't want it. That's like the Lafayette Street home. If they would take the home, we could go after the bank because now we know something will get done. And they're smart, too. They're saying, we're not going to take this house right now because it's not worth it for us to take the home. Let it sit there and let it collapse. I mean, that's basically, it's the sad part of what's going on in this country right now. But, I mean, you know, look into it, Jim, see what, see what can happen. Um, the other thing is, um, I know that with the, uh, the borough crew has been, um, I don't want to use the word dumping, but they've been depositing, um, I guess, uh, cutting trees down throughout the borough when we have the trees falling down, the wood chips. There's piles and piles of wood chips behind Grundy Tower. Along, well, it's along the property line, fence line of CBM. It's just piles there. The grass is pretty high. I just wonder if we get the borough crew over there. Just, I think I sent an email, and I think George was saying that they're going to they're gonna use that for weed control back there. If we just get them to spread that out and, and tidy it up back there. I know they're so behind in grass, and I, know. Okay. I think today everybody was caught in grass. And, and the, the only other thing I have is the uh, Mr. Ivy was here. Uh, Last month, regarding uh, we're going to look into paving West Railroad Avenue, part of that. It's like 10 foot by 33 foot along the homes there. I was wondering how we made out with if George has been able to go out and assess that. It's on the list. Huh? That's on the list. all I okay. can tell you. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Joe. Let me give you some good news. It's been a busy month for us at the uh, in the mayor's office and the police and fire department. 
On the Saturday, April 28th, we had the medication take-back protocol. I don't know if, if the chief uh, got any feedback on uh, how many pounds we've gotten rid of, but uh, we were here all day on the 28th accepting uh, any drugs, prescription medicine, and so forth that the uh, general public wanted to bring in and drop off for disposal. Um, as Chief Henry mentioned, that Kilo, our canine, is retired, and next Monday night we're going to honor him. I also got a, an email from a resident thanking the, uh, the police department for the wonderful job that they're doing relative to uh, speeding along Pond Street. This was a person who lives on that street. Thank the Bristol Borough Police Department for doing a great job and keeping children and all residents safe. Uh, let's see. Also, too, we got a, a, a thank you from uh, Bucks County Children and Youth, the Social Services Agency, thanking the police department for a recent assist that they gave children and youth. And let's see. Uh, in the month of April, we had 1,241 calls in Little Bristol Borough. It's 1,241 police calls. Last year, as, as I mentioned before, uh, we had 19,416 calls during the course of the year. The other good news is, in looking at the budget, we were at about 21% through the month of April as far as having spent 21% of our borough budget for the police department. I also just got the uh, Bristol Lions Club Summer Concert Series. Starts on uh, June, 20, June 10th. Uh, which will run through all the way to Labor Day, or actually continuing all the way through Bristol Day. Uh, that's every Sunday night, 6 o'clock, down at the wharf. Also, too, there's a guide to historic Bristol Borough. These pamphlets, um, every store, business, as far as I know, on Mill Street and throughout the borough are in this pamphlet, phone numbers, addresses, and what they do. They're being distributed by the uh, uh, Bristol Borough Business Association. We have some here, and they're, they're in the stores in Ratcliffe Cafe. So, like I said, all good news. Also, too, um, I'd like to be able to read a, the proclamation that we gave to uh, Chief Herb Slack for his 50 years of service to Bristol Borough as a uh, volunteer fireman. I'd like to read that out at our next uh, public meeting. Also, too, I met with the fire chiefs during the course of the month. I know Chief Slack's not here. I think Merle has some stuff. I just want to remind everybody that we have the first 500 CO alarms with 10-year batteries. Uh, the chief has asked all the companies to make sure they have smoke alarms on the apparatus. So if we respond to a fire at a house and they don't have them, uh, when it's all said and done, we can install them for the people. And the last thing I have is that the uh, I was invited to speak to the Bucks County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, their, they call it their keynote speaker. Uh, there was about 70 business people from Bucks County there. It was held at the, uh, the Grundy Commons building. Uh, Mr. Baumgarten hosted it on, his, on the sixth floor. And I talked about all the great things that are happening in our town, the increased business, the vacancy rate down very low, and people were very interested about what happened with the um, with the revolution in the small business. So, and to end that, I got an interview for the last uh, series, a couple of us did, for that'll be on Hulu. And then we finished up last uh, Thursday night at the wharf. That's about it. Okay. I just have a couple things. First of all, in case anybody here is Simon Schuster was sold today. Oh. So uh, we heard it was sold for like $8 million. Uh, I think there's two pieces there, correct? Wow. The one was sold for $8 million or was it total about $10.4 wow. $10. million? So that's breaking news so everybody can get your mark. Keep it as a storage warehouse. That's for plants, storage. We're saying they're going to keep it as storage warehouse. Hmm. Will, will CBS be uh, using it still? 
Simon and Schuster? No. Until the end of June. Yes. Yeah, they bought, CBS bought that, right? I don't know. The bought. Our company that owns it. Yeah. Simon and Schuster it. will stay until the end stay. of June. And then that's and it. And a new company will A new company will use it as storage. And is that what you're saying? Storage and warehouse. Pretty much the same. All right, there's a place to put it up. All right, just to let you know, tomorrow at 1 p.m. down at the wharf, we're going to be hosting the secretary of DCNR, Cindy Adams Dunn, uh, uh, State Senator John, I keep that out of Uduchuk. Uduchuk. <laughs> Uduchuk is going to be going, starting in Bristol Borough, and I think he's going to go to Easton. He's going to take the canal trail all the way. You know, Apparently, this is what we're hearing, but he's starting here. He chose Bristol Borough as his starting point. So if anybody wants to go down tomorrow at 1 o'clock, you're more than welcome. Uh, talk to, talking to our police chief, Council, I'm going to put on the agenda to extend his police contract for two years. His contract's up today. When's your? Uh, last week. Last week. Four. So. Without a contract. Yours? So he's been without a contract, so we can vote next Monday to either fire him and don't give it to him or to renew it. So it will be on the agenda. The chief brought up a part-time police officer, and I guess as far as we're concerned, if he wants to bring five more in, it really doesn't affect us in any way. He's Him and the mayor are controlling the budget, and I think they're doing a, a pretty good job with it. I know we had some incidents that you know, unforeseen, and that's that's normal. But there's nothing we can do about things like that. So we'll put it on the agenda to hire. Put on the agenda Kevin to hire Kevin, uh, Kevin Riley and to extend the point. There are two agenda items so far. Chief, are you going to bring Riley in? Yes, sir, and also bring uh, Officer Dragon because and we hired him months prior. Hire. Okay. And you and the mayor will get all that done together. All right, the docks. Just so everybody knows that the docks been closed from when the incident happened with the ice and everything. We met on, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, down at the docks with uh, Bellingham, they're the company that built the floating docks, and Simpson and Brown, who was the contractor that was awarded the job. And the borough had them closed because our insurance company and Everybody's telling us until you can get a letter that they're going to be safe, we don't want anybody on them. So Bellingham had said to us that day at the meeting, we built these docks. We could almost guarantee it and nothing's going to happen to them. So our first response was, well, then give us a letter to that effect and we'll open them up tomorrow. So it took two, excuse me, it took two days to get the letter. But on Friday, we received a letter stating that the docks in their mine are safe. So we opened up the docks to the public. They are willing to do whatever they have to do to replace the last two docks, which they wanted to do back in February. But our concern was not to do anything. We talked about this in executive session in case we weren't happy with their decision. You know, we had to protect the, the borough on this uh, potential litigation. So I think everything worked out great. And I said, to them, standing if this happens again next year, you know, what are we going to do? He said, well, I guess we'll be standing here next year figuring out a way to make it right again. But he says, we'll guarantee our docks. So we, we're dealing with two, as far as I'm concerned, very qualified and quality people that are willing to do whatever they have to do to make it right. So that's good news. As far as the wharf is concerned, uh, our guys did an outstanding job down there, as far as I'm concerned. They're now coming to completion of the project. The only thing left is the painting. I had asked anybody if they wanted to come here and give us a day rate or, you know, nobody had showed up. So I made a couple phone calls, and we have a price to paint the wharf for $9,700. That's labor only, which is probably... I don't think you're going to get anybody to give you a better number than that for about a three to four weeks worth of work. There's a lot of painting that's got to be done down there. 
So I'm just, it doesn't have to go out to a vote. The manager can make that decision. If anybody's against that, let me know <coughs> now. We'll, but they're ready to start on Wednesday. We like to get it done for Memorial Day weekend. So, uh, you know, working with the borough crew, we're going to buy the material we have an account uh, set up to buy everything that we need. And uh, they'll do a good job. So, nobody's opposed to that. I'll have the manager contact them tomorrow and tell them to uh, proceed. Jim, you have anything? No, just what's uh, listed for items for consideration at Monday evening's meeting. I don't know if anyone has any questions uh, on that, but I would like to iterate what Samantha said about the uh, MS4 pollutant reduction plan, which uh, we're being forced to do. Uh, it could cost the borough 450000 plus another 125000 of engineering over the, the next three to five years so it's you know it's a mandate uh, and, and it's going to be very costly uh, so I don't know if you had any questions about the items that are ready to go for Monday night on the agenda they were in your packet to, to the best of my knowledge the other thing is Jim I forgot to bring up the purchase of uh, 10 I forget that address, Elm Street. 23. 20. That, that, that's listed there as 1023 Elm Street in the amount of $55,000. Okay. So I have. Also, uh, uh, we opened bids, uh, I think it was Thursday, and, uh, and Gilmore has given us a recommendation for uh, award a handicap curve bid for Wilson and Garfield uh, for. $14,940. Uh, that does not include the material. The borough will uh, pay for that. Uh, and after that, there's only one intersection that still has to be finished, and then all Wilson Avenue will be completed because also Mill Run's going to do uh, a section there on uh, Wilson. But uh, I guess that's about it. Have anything? Anyone else have anything before we adjourn? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I second. Mr. Riccio, meeting adjourned.